Hey, welcome to another episode of Coffee and Hema, uh, where I try and make a point about Hema while my coffee brews. So um, I want to continue on um, talking about sort of teaching uh, and, and pedagogy in particular, and I want to do quite a few videos on this. Um, but before I go into any kind of specific videos on sort of advice for how to teach or start of teaching, I wanted to talk about first sort of what is, what I think learning is in the context of humor, uh, and sort of what I would say it means to have, have learnt something. Um, and this is important because it sort of shows sort of what I value and don't value uh, from a learning and a teaching experience, which might be different from what you value. Uh, again, I'm not using this as a, as a value statement, just as a, as a description. Um, and I think probably everybody needs to think very carefully about what, what they think learning success means uh, for their students when trying to teach something across. So for me, I would say you have successfully learned something in HEMA when you are able to apply it in uh, the correct situation, in an unscripted context, and you are able, after the fact, to describe what you did and why. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of things to unpack there, right? So, um, but just to, to, to focus in on a couple, so applying it in the appropriate moment in an unscripted context is key. Okay. So I don't think you can say you've learned something if you're only able to do it when you are being given a very expected and very specific uh, input, you know, the person is doing the same thing every single time and you can perform the same response every single time, that alone is not evidence that you've learned it, right? Because you're, you're applying it in a very structured, a very specific context and there is no indication that you would be able to go from that to applying it in, in a kind of a more freeform context and it's the freeform context that would constitute having successfully learned it. Um, that means that, uh, you know, unscripted context doesn't have to be, uh, you know, finals of a tournament, um, some kind of, uh, sparring activity would be perfectly fine. Um, but it certainly doesn't mean, you know, doing it in a drill. And then the second component, as I said, the, the ability to describe it after the fact, right? Uh, what does that mean? Well, essentially you have to be able, if, if someone said, what did you do there, right? It has to be more than you just being just being saying, "Oh, I, I hit him," right? You need to be able to say, "Oh, the situation was this," right? Uh, they changed guard while I was too close to them, and I exploited that guard change and I hit them in the middle of it, right? You could have said that in a different context. You could have said, "Oh, they they gave me the tempo from guard change and I and I hit them, or I exploited the tempo, whatever it happens to be." I'm not too fussed personally about whether the terminology used is identical to how it's described in the book. But a, a clear recognition that the concept was uh, was seen, concept was applied correctly uh, after the fact, and it's important that it's after the fact, right? And the reason I say that is that it's not always possible for you to plan your next action. Um, you know, a lot of fencing is reactive. A lot of fencing is exploring the situation that you find yourself in, rather than, or or trying to deliberately set up a situation. But it's dependent on what's actually going on. Um, so. Uh, what I don't consider important from a perspective of learning is the ability to say, right, I am now about to apply play 14 from the book and then successfully apply play 14 from the book, uh, whichever 14 would happen to be. Um, and the reason I say that is that um, the, the ability to select the technique that you want is dependent on the situation. Right, so um, you don't necessarily have to be able to, to proactively do it to, to that extent because the situation that is appropriate for play 14 uh, may not be there or it may be kind of only there if you squint really hard and you have to move forward from there. Um, so when I'm gonna talk about pedagogy, when I'm gonna be talking about learning and teaching uh, for all subsequent videos, I want you to keep this in mind, right? I don't highly value uh, the I don't highly value the ability to replicate something in a slow drill format. It might have instrumental purpose, but it's not a goal in itself. I don't highly value the ability to uh, copy uh, a sequence of actions by rote. Again, it might have instrumental value, but it's not the learning goal. Um, I don't highly value the ability to reproduce um, it reproduce uh, terminology in the original language. Again, if it has instrumental value or good, 
uh, but it's not a goal in itself. The goal is the ability for the student to successfully perform the technique in an unscripted format, in the correct situation, and to understand what it is that they did, be able to describe the situation that they were in and why the action that they performed was the appropriate action. And that's it, right? That will color all further conversations uh, around pedagogy going forward. If you have a different set, that's fine, right? Maybe you do value terminology. Maybe you do value uh, being able to copy long sequences of techniques in the book. Maybe you do think that these things are goals in their own right, learning goals in their own right. By all means, that's up to you. Feel free to have them as learning goals, but my advice will not be very useful for you because it will not be geared towards those goals unless they help us get to a certain, uh, unless they are an interim step to get us to one of the end goals, which is again, the application of the technique in an unscripted situation.